Hello, everyone, and welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. Today, we're going to take a run right back into my playthrough on my Aurora LX, where I'm trying to pretend I'm a brand new player, trying to make my way in the Star Citizen universe. In the last episode, we tried a ECN mission. We tried a couple of cargo runs, and we spent a lot of cash. We spent a lot of UEC. We spent 12,600 credits on two shield generators, force walls. I'm not even sure I needed those. And we spent uh, sorted numbers of UEC on clothing, going from 26,000 down to around 12,000 credits. We're sitting around 13,300, somewhere around that. The actual number will be down in the lower left as we're following through with this. Now, what I'm finding is that it's very tempting to buy new things. I went on my... I think I played for a solid three hours and made a whopping, let's see, maybe 20k doing what we would call delivery missions. And these missions take a boatload of time. Now, I am trying to stay away from the chaos that is picking up and selling Widow. I'm not sure if the chaos is still there, but I know there's a lot of emergent gameplay right around the drug lab where people try to kill each other. And I'm, I'm not saying I don't condone the behavior. I probably do. It sounds like a lot of fun. But for this, I'm just trying to see what if I was a new player? How would I make money? So in this episode, what I found was that the best way was these delivery missions. We'd fly out to a far away remote area, pick up some, let's see, what were we picking up? We were picking up medical supplies and ore and gas, and we were hauling them just one, just one little teeny tiny box of very, very, very expensive items and bringing them somewhere else. In the end, I found that you were usually going from like CRUL1 to HURL5 or vice versa, or sometimes you would get one that would say, bring, bring this to gate six. I'm finding that the Aurora is a very difficult ship to make money in. Now, I'm not certain at this point if I'm going to continue playing through. I think I will because it's a challenge at this point. But what I'm finding is that it takes forever in quantum space or it takes forever to quantum leap, <laughs> quantum jump from one area of the Stanton system to the other. And of course, we're in an entry level ship with entry level hardware or equipment. And I've been trying my best to decide should I or shouldn't I upgrade my quantum drive. Now it's going to cost me about 13k to do so. And I'm not sure if that's 13k well spent. If it drops my time and space by 25%, I'd probably be able to make up the difference that I spend, which will be about 13,000 to 16,000 credits on a Class C military quantum drive. But I'm not sure what the specs actually are on that. Currently, there's no way to evaluate what, when you're standing in front of an item how that will affect your performance. Of course, we're still in alpha. I could go online and I could read about it, but I'm not trying to do that in this playthrough. In this playthrough, what I'm trying to do is to determine, can I have fun and make money in the game? I've flown so many hours around the Stanton system at this point, I can tell you. Many people that have just started playing the game say it's boring. 
I can see it from their perspective. But from a player that <laughs> has played other games like Bus Simulator, American and European Truck Simulator, and Farming Simulator, I don't find this boring at all. I actually have had some of my best times in the game over the past few days trying to make money in the universe. It's not easy, I'll tell you that. And I know that things are going to be much different when the game goes live, but right now it's not very easy to make money unless you want to go do nefarious things, like sell Widow. Which I don't have a problem with, I just don't want to do it on this character right now. I know I've said that over and over again, and I do apologize for that. So in this run, we took some distilled spirits, alcohol, from, I think we're at Gillette Family Farms. We had just brought them the agricultural supplies and actually lost two credits, I think it was, on that run. And now we flew all the way to Hurston, landed at Lorville, and we're going to go and see if we can make a little bit of cashola. So I think we're at 13,311 or thereabouts, and we shoot all the way up to 13,600, I think, or maybe 500. Regardless of the number, it still isn't enough money. Nope, not enough money at all. I had to stop and look at the screen. So now at this point is when I started to change. When I said, you know, there's a lot of these missions that are giving a lot more cash to just move a box. I know we already talked about this, but they were the beginning of my getting to see all these different rest stops. The last time I played the game, I didn't go all, the, all around to all the rest stops. What I was really doing at that time was going out and mining because I really like to mine. It's kind of fun. And I didn't get to see how they changed it so the rest stops were very unique. When I played last, the rest stops were pretty much all the same. But in this playthrough, each time I go to a rest stop, I like the fact that things are in different areas. Now, I still have my... You know, it's like, what kind of standard do we hold CIG to? Do we hold them to a realism standard? Do we hold them to a good enough standard because I really want to just play? I'm going to say that's the one right now that we're going to hold them to. Or do we hold them to a standard of just give me a place to land at so I could refuel and dump something off and go? And the reason I say that is they spent so much time making these look so beautiful and so different. The two key things that they're missing is a dining area and showers in a bathroom that somebody that would be going to a truck stop would need, which I find rather hysterical. Now, if we think about it, the big cargo ships, the huge ones, will have their own bathrooms, their own showers, their own sleeping quarters. Even so, a rest stop of this caliber should at least have a few easy habs that are for rent. Maybe really, really crappy, but not as bad as Levski or Grimhex. And they should have a place where you could sit down and grab a drink and overlook, the, you know, look out over the stars. This is another issue I've had. Every time I go into certain ones of these rest stops, they don't have any fuel and can't repair my ship, which I, I'm thinking it's because of where I land and nothing else. So I guess I have to more center myself. Mm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure if that's not working because I didn't land in the right place or if that's not working because it's a broken feature in the game. I'm going to have to reevaluate that and look at that over time. Wow. Every time I look at this game, every time I see it, I just fall in love yet again. 
I think it's rather amazing. All right, so we got inside and we found ourselves to the admin office, and I love these Kovalex shipping boxes. I think it's amazing. It's like, do they all of a sudden beam in your box out of this one? I mean, look at this. All of a sudden it just appears. And for the number of things that you take out and put into these box receptacles, I'm wondering if they actually have some kind of conveyor belt behind it. I know they don't, and they just materialize there, but it's, it would be pretty cool to think about how do they make that work? So when you get into your Aurora, you have to turn around. Now, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm overthinking the process, and I really... I just throw it down at the ground. It gets stuck over there and I decide, you know what? I've had physics break too many times when something wasn't put down right. So I pick it back up again and I place it right back down again. All right, that's good. All right, so we took it from here and we fly out to another place. I think this is awesome. So it looks like we're going to Daymore on this one. Um, I just think it's Daymore because, you know, it's look, got an atmosphere and it's got sand and lots of it. There was a constellation that was just sitting here forever. And I didn't want to go land in front of him, so I just landed on the ground next to him. And like magic, we're right inside right now. Placing our box right into one of the pickup and drop-offs. This one is not owned by Kovalex. And like magic, it disappears and we are given some money. And that brought us up to 17,103. So that was just under 2,000 credits. Or maybe it was just over 2,000 credits. I think it was. Again, you're going to see it down below. So, in this run, I'm going to take something. Something I could sell over at Kovalex. And this was the end of one of my evenings. So, I was playing for quite a long time at this point and needed to get to sleep. By this point in the evening, I've been playing for quite a long time. And I was just looking to get back to Port Alisar and call it a night. So we took, I forget what we brought, but it made us a few hundred credits. I think this was the most credits that I made from moving three CU, SCUs of cargo in this ship to date. And I wasn't unhappy. It just gave me an opportunity to close out the evening. So far, so good. I'm almost back to a respectable number. Now, I'm sure, like I said, I can make a lot more money moving more nefarious items. All right, so we are here again. We grabbed a box. And I forget where I got this box from. But this is the one that's going to bring me up and over my threshold of 20K. But even at 20K, that's going to leave me $6,000 or 6,000 credits shy of where I started at. But I do have a ship that could take more of a beating in a fight. I'm still thinking about trading out my power plant and my quantum drive, but I'm not sure if either one of those upgrades are actually going to work for what the LX is supposed to be, which is an exploration ship or a pathfinder. So we made just about 1,200 and 10 to 1230 credits off of this run still not great but the best that we've done in one run so far this mission was the catalyst for me to change the missions i was running in order to make uec in the past every single time that i would take any kind of a pickup and delivery mission with my aurora or with my Mustang, every time I'd get back to the ship, I'd get in the ship and the box would fall out of my hand. But now on the Aurora, it's actually working. And I think that's awesome. This last run didn't register a dime. That's why it's up here. I got 
pissed. I'd been running missions for a couple of hours the day before. And the first one I go and I run this day, I take the box from A to B, put the box into the receptacle. The box goes in the receptacle. I get the complete and I got no money for it. I was supposed to get a lot of cash for that. So I went back to running more of these and I believe I had much more success doing this than anything else that I was doing at the time. Now, I, I did stop today over at Hurston and I walked into the New Deal shipyard and I'm realizing that for the ships I want, it's going to take me 100 to 200 runs to make the money that I need doing this. And that's not going to fly. And it's starting to make me think, is this really what Chris wants in the end of the game? Well, of course I'm not thinking that because this isn't what Chris Roberts wants for the end of the game. They're going to balance this over time, and it's going to make sense. But we're actively promoting the game, actively looking for new people to come into the game. But we're not giving them a game where you can feel a sense of fulfillment, where you could feel like what I did today mattered. And that's a problem because... What we're telling new people coming into the game is, yeah, you could definitely play this game on a $45 ship. It's perfectly doable. And then out of curiosity, that player takes a run over to either Levski or over to the New Deal shipyard and finds that the next ship up, which is just a little bit better, it's going to be somewhere from three to 500 k and it's going to take them forever to get it. I don't have a problem with it because I could always go back to my Batgirl account and fly all those other ships. But I can't I I can't help but think that people would be outrageously frustrated from making all these runs and not coming up with even a fraction of the UEC it's going to take to buy my next ship. Even so, I do have to say that maybe it's the masochistic nature of my gaming life. I love this game. I think it's wonderful. And although it's frustrating and is taking a very long time, I'm actually having fun again for the first time in a long time with Star Citizen. So as we near the end, we are just over 22k, which still leaves us about 4k down from where we started. And I hope you're going to join me to see how things go in the future with my playthrough of Star Citizen on my starter account. You all know the drill. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button down below. If you have any comments, suggestions, tips, whatever it might be, put them in the comment section below. And if you do subscribe to my channel, be sure to click that bell-shaped icon to get notified of all my future videos. Folks, thank you so much. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.